I'm enjoying your fiancé. These words. I've heard these words before. You were looking forward to a destination wedding. It's too bad. I'm going to take your place in the ceremony. I guess it's all over for you, huh? Could it be that this day has finally come for me? The day I've been looking forward to for so long? Wow, I'm getting nervous. What are you talking about? Never mind. Um, may I know your name? Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. My name is Gina. Please remember my name, the name of the woman who stole your fiancé. Gina. I can't believe I got a text from Gina, who is like a real-life soap opera star. I'm so touched. What do you mean by soap opera star? I love soap operas. I binge watch them. Oh, do you? I never thought that my life would be filled with this kind of drama. It's like I'm the main character of a soap series. And to hear it from you, Gina, I'm so moved. I can't believe this day has come. Um, if you don't mind, could you autograph my book or something? I don't understand why you are so happy. By the way, do you know me? My beauty has reached even a regular person like you, hasn't it? No comment on the beauty thing, but you're a celebrity. You're the Gina who's been going through your neighbor's husbands. Well, what a thing to say. Are you trying to pick a fight with me? No, I'm just impressed. I'm starstruck. Thank you for the text. I'm surprised. You have no right to thank me. I wonder if you're going into shock. Right. I'm sorry. I was a little overwhelmed with joy. I never thought this day would come. Joy? You mean you're not sad? I stole your fiancé from you. I even hijacked your destination wedding. Let me ask you something. Answer my question first. Well, I have a question that's been bothering me for a while. Make it quick. What is it? I was wondering if it's possible. My wedding dress. Are you going to use it as is, Gina? Oh, no. I got rid of that stupid dress. Of course, I took it out with the trash. I will wear a nicer dress that is more appropriate for me. You hijacked the wedding. And you even trashed the dress. That's Gina for you. You've been talking nonsense for a while now. Did you want for me to steal your fiancé? No, no, no. No, of course not. That's a huge shock to me. Ha 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 ha. I know, right before the wedding, your fiancé was taken away from you. How good it feels to take something that belongs to someone else. So, I have one favor to ask you. What's up with you? You're being rude asking me for a favor. Really, Gina? My fiancé was stolen right before my wedding. I'm miserable. Have some mercy on me. I guess it can't be helped. It is my duty as the noble one to show mercy to this pathetic little girl. Please, say whatever you like. At least to soothe this bitter heart, May I see your impersonations, Gina? What are you talking about all of a sudden? Are you all right in the head? I heard that you are good at impersonating comedians. I'm just trying to ease the shock of having my fiancé and wedding hijacked. You are really weird. And to think that you know about my impersonations, it's kind of scary. I guess my awesomeness is well known. Can you do me that favor? You took everything from me. So you'd do that for me, wouldn't you? I don't mind. Can I send it over the phone? If you use your phone's voice messaging service, you can send me a voice message. If you let me hear it, I'll gladly give you the wedding next month. Please let me hear it. Well, then, here we go. Yes! It still feels weird that you asked for it. What did you say? What kind of attitude is that after stealing someone's husband? You've got to be kidding me! What? What are you saying all of a sudden? And what husband? It's your fiancé, isn't it? He's already your husband? No, we haven't registered yet. I meant to say my fiancé. I'm just getting so worked up because you stole him. 
I wanted to try getting angry, but I made a mistake. The only thing you got wrong was the timing of your outburst. I see. Thanks for saying so. I didn't mean it as a compliment. Talking to you makes me feel like I'm going crazy. No wonder you got dumped with a brain like that. Please don't say that. I'm seriously depressed. Um, can I go to the wedding? I'm also interested in what your new dress looks like. Definitely not. I finally understand what you're thinking. You're trying to ruin my wedding, aren't you? No, I won't do that. I couldn't get closure just from your text, so I thought I'd get it when I saw the wedding. I thought if I saw it in person, I could get over it. You do have a point. So you will invite me? If you can make it overseas, come. Yes, I'll save up and dress to come. You're a bit scary, actually. Please don't come. I'm done talking with you. Have a nice day. I'm 38 years old. I was planning to get married abroad next month, just the two of us. As you can see, Gina has taken over, and yet I feel like a girl I usually watch in daytime dramas. I was so excited that I forgot about myself. I was so excited that I got carried away. Gina's famous in this neighborhood for taking other people's husbands. She's a person who loves to take things, and she talks like a celebrity. I never expected to get a text from Gina, who's famous in the neighborhood. My ex is rich, and the president of a company that Gina loves. Maybe it's no wonder she went after him. Huh? Oh, by the way, I was so excited that I forgot. How did she know how to contact me? I forgot to ask her. I guess he must have told her. I'm very depressed, even though I'm acting like this. I was in love with him. Gina rubbed more salt into the wound. How do you like it? Does it look good on me? This is the first time I've seen a picture of you. You're beautiful, aren't you? Oh my, I got complimented again. Tell me more, I love it. It's like casting pearls before swine, but it does look nice. I think I'm going to fall over the moment I see it. Oh no, that's not a compliment. I am a pearl. I am the hottest thing you've ever seen. Oh, it's true. I wrote swine by mistake. I'm sorry. My fingers were moving all by themselves. I hope you've given up now. When are you going to get out of the apartment? My parents have cut me off and I have nowhere to go. Can't you just let me stay here until I find a job? No one will hire a crazy woman like you. I can get a job. I'll find a job soon. You're going to stay there forever, aren't you? Oh, did you guess that? I thought I could stay on for a few more months. You're surprisingly perceptive, Gina. I'm so disappointed. You should go back to your parents' house. I told you earlier that I was cut off from them. I'm all alone in the world. I'm so pitiful, aren't I? I thought I'd found a boyfriend who's the president of a big company and my life was going to be happy from now on, but... I thought I was going to be happy with my life, but you stole him away from me, and now I'm alone again. Life is so difficult, isn't it? Well, it is, isn't it? I'm a compassionate person. I'll get you some cardboard boxes from the supermarket. After I get them, you can use them. I'll ask a friend of mine who lives nearby. I don't need cardboard. It's warm because I have heating. The electricity in the apartment will be turned off soon. I'll shut off the water, too, so you won't be able to stay there. You can turn off the water, but please don't turn off the heating. I beg you. Even if you ask politely, it's no good. From today, you should stay outdoors. That's your place now, as a homeless lady. I understand. You're so understanding. I should talk like a celebrity like you. No, you shouldn't. You're not a celebrity. I'm a celebrity. Besides, you don't have to say it like that. I understand exactly how you feel, Gina. 
You really have no dignity, do you? How dare you call me a celebrity when you don't even know how to use language? I will try to be as close to you as possible, Gina. I was a fool to think you could understand me. I apologize, ma'am. I'm not a ma'am. I'll have you thrown out immediately. I'll at least be merciful and find you some cardboard boxes. If you do that, I'll talk to some gang members. I'm going to scare the shit out of you. I beg your pardon? Do you know such people? No, I guess I don't know anyone like that. Don't try to scare me. It's despicable to lie like that. What's that? The lights are out. Looks like his friends have arrived. Well, I really hope you have a nice day this time. There you are. Don't you dare harass me. Do you have any idea what will happen to you if you do this? Ah, what's up, Gina? Thank you for the cardboard. Where are you now? Tell me. I need to ask you something in person. I'm at work. Where is it? I'll be with you in a moment. I'm having dinner with a client. I'm afraid I can't see you right now. Is it so urgent? Then just tell me by text. I'd like to ask you about it as soon as possible. My husband says he was fired by you. What the hell does that mean? It was decided by the board, not by me. Huh? You're talking nonsense again. Are you trying to trick me? Your husband was fired because he embezzled company money. The board of directors unanimously decided that he should be fired. Don't lie to me. What? Lie? Lie? I'm not lying. That's not what I meant. Well, what did you mean then? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm so frustrated. It's like exercise chatting with someone who runs you in circles. <laughs> so, can I lose weight just by doing this? If you want to lose weight, shall we talk some more? You can't trick me, you know. How do you know that it's the board of directors? Answer me right away. My father is the president of the parent company of your husband's company. What the hell? You never said anything about that. My father cut off the relationship between them. What? My father didn't like my fiancé. Oh, sorry, I mean your husband. Anyway, he was against me marrying him, and he said, If you marry him, I'll cut off our business relationship. So we were going to elope. What? Was that so? And then, as soon as my father cut me off, you took him away from me. I was so heartbroken. You hijacked our wedding, threw away my dress. I felt like I was thrown out too. My husband never mentioned anything like that to me. He's a vain man. Maybe he only shows you the best parts of himself. I'll get him on the phone right away to see if what you're saying is true. I'll find out if you're lying. It's true. There's no point in me lying like this. If it's true, what will happen to us? I guess you can live outdoors. Shall I find some cardboard boxes? I need to live outdoors? Would you like to stay at my house? Where do you live now? I live in a townhouse in front of the station. What? You mean that recently built luxury apartment building? I thought you didn't have any money. My father bought it for me when I ended up not getting married. What? He was on the verge of cutting me off. But when I told him about the circumstances of what happened, he forgave me. He also returned the shares of the parent company to me. I have money, too. Shares? You also own stocks? Yes, I do. I originally planned to succeed my father. I'm the largest shareholder. What's going on? It's a text from my husband. I was fired from my job after being caught embezzling. What should I do about the 500000 I spent? I wonder how he can pay it back. 500000 is a bit much, don't you think? I wonder if he finally admitted his guilt. You will have a tough time from now on. Even for a celebrity like you, 500000 seems like a lot of money. It's a small amount of money, but I don't have any money on hand right now. Ah, if you have money, please lend me 500000 Hmm, I don't know what to do. 
I know. I'll do an impression. You said you wanted to hear it, right? Oh, really? I want to hear it. Please send it to me. Wow, you're good at it, Gina. I couldn't help but smile. I'm honored that you're pleased. Well, since I'm already asking, I'll borrow a hundred thousand. Huh? You suddenly turned serious. All at once, I lost interest in lending it to you. Oh, why? What's wrong? It's strange that you suddenly want me to lend twice as much money, isn't it? Oh, I made a typo. Please lend me 500000 Definitely not. Oh, why? What's wrong? Oh, I know. Let's be friends from now on. You love me, don't you? I'll even sign an autograph for you. You said you wanted it before. I don't love you, you idiot. What's the matter with you all of a sudden? You took my fiancé and trashed the dress I chose. Don't play dumb with me. Please, calm down. You said you were smiling earlier. What's wrong with you all of a sudden? What's wrong with you? You even hijacked the destination wedding I was looking forward to. I can't calm down. Well, I don't know what to do. And I'm supposed to go homeless in the middle of winter? You're the one that should be homeless. That was out of line. I apologize for that. I thought I wouldn't sue you now that I've got my money back. But you'll have to pay me alimony, and you can tell your husband that. Please, don't do that. Like I said before, we don't have any money on hand. Please have mercy on me at least. Don't be stupid. If you think you're the only one who can be strong, you're mistaken. Work day and night and make sure you pay back the company. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. I swear to you, what did you say back? What did you say back? Yes. Ah. I feel better now. After all, it's hard to be taken seriously if you don't lose your temper at the end, isn't it? I, um... Ah, there's a text from my husband. I got caught embezzling and was fired from my job. Don't ever tell anyone about the 500000 I spent. Well, what should I do? You're one step too late. You already told the truth yourself, didn't you? If you would just keep quiet, that would be enough. Please don't tell anyone. I'm sorry. I've already sent a screenshot to my father. It's too late. Damn. You seem angry, so I'll block you now. Please wait. I'm sorry. Please, 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 please give me some money. Please make me a celebrity again. Gina's husband was caught embezzling and had to pay for his crime. He had to go to prison. To pay back the 500000 that he had spent, Gina decided to make a career out of her impressions and applied for a TV show. She applied for the show, but was unsuccessful. She works as a cleaner by day and a traffic guard by night. She has fallen from celebrity overnight and is now just an ordinary person who is good at impersonations. I am a little disappointed that I no longer see Gina as a celebrity. The alimony to me is being paid by garnishment of her wages. I started working to take over my father's company. I am usually an anxious person, but I can do my job well. At first, I was depressed because my fiancé was taken away from me. But I am very glad that I did not marry a man who embezzles money. Kim, you're going to have a baby soon. Are you feeling okay? Don't overdo it. Take care of yourself. Thank you, Jake. I'm fine. I'm feeling great. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm sorry I can't be there for you every day. But even though we're not together, I think about you every day and worry about you. If there's anything you want me to do, please, don't hesitate to ask. I'll be there for the birth. I promise. Thank you. That's reassuring. It's okay if you can't be here every day. You have a job. Right, I'm really sorry. I'll try to be by your side all the time soon. I'm glad. Your words are encouraging. It's only natural. I'm going to be a daddy. I can't wait to see our child's face. 
I want my unborn child to be with his or her daddy all the time, you know. With such a kind daddy, the baby and I will feel safe. I'm really happy that you are the daddy. I'm so happy that we get to be a daddy and mommy together too. The baby is connected to both of us by blood. It'll be the fruit of our love. I promise I'll always be by your side. That's right. Having my own child is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I can't believe we're going to have a baby. How long have we been together? Well, almost two years. I can't believe it's been that long already. I've had so much fun with you. It really flew by. I still remember how we met. I always think about how we met too. The day you and I met. I realized that fate is really like that. It's true. The reunion was actually a bit of a pain in the butt for me. But I was good friends with the organizers, so I couldn't not attend. I never thought I would meet you there, you who had become such a wonderful woman. In the past, I didn't notice you, but I was a fool at the time. If I had realized it earlier, we could have spent more time together. Even now, I still think about it. But I think it's because we met again that we are together now. I was a bit depressed about going to the reunion too because I was stressed out about being single, but I'm glad I went. Me too. It was hard for me to meet the woman of my dreams. I thought I'd stay single forever. I never thought you'd stay single. You were always so cool. You never thought about getting married? I didn't meet anyone I wanted to marry, but that was so I could meet you, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm really happy that you chose me. Oh, so what should we do about the registration? Oh, sorry for making you worry about that. I know I've told you a little bit about this before, but we're almost done with the project. When I'm done, I'll have more time. And then we'll go to the city office together. I already got the marriage certificate. Don't worry, we'll be officially married soon. Really? I'm so glad you have the marriage certificate ready. I'll be done with the project before the baby is born. Thank you, Jake. Jake, I love you. I love you too. Anyway, I'll definitely stay by your side for a month after the birth. What? Can you do that? Don't push yourself too hard. I'll be fine. I have extra paid vacation. Plus, I might be able to get maternity leave. I'm just finishing up a project. I can take a longer vacation with my project leave. Oh yeah, that's great. I'll do whatever it takes for you and the baby. I've been too busy with work and haven't been able to be with you, but from now on, I will be there for you. I believe you. Well, I have a meeting, so I'll be in touch later. I'm really looking forward to the birth. I have to put in some work. Okay, I'm looking forward to it too. But don't push yourself too hard, okay? Thanks for working so hard. My name is Mana, and not Kim. This is a huge misdirected message sent to me by my husband, Jake. My husband was communicating with me without realizing he had sent the message to me. This is like a confession of infidelity. I was impersonating his girlfriend and getting all sorts of information from him. I was thinking how I would get back at him when I received another message from my husband. I'll be home in five minutes. What's for dinner tonight? Oh, you're done already? You're early. Early? Isn't it always about this time? Yes, it is. But I thought you weren't coming back yet. I haven't made dinner yet. Why not? I didn't say I'd be late. Because you said you had a meeting a few minutes ago. What are you talking about? There was never a meeting. Did I send a message saying that? Why don't you check your history? Huh? Did you see it? You said yourself that the meeting was coming up soon, didn't you? Well, that doesn't matter. So your soon-to-be wife is going to have a baby. Congratulations. No, this is a misunderstanding. Hmm? How is it a misunderstanding? It's a massive blunder, isn't it? No, it's not. I was talking about a friend's childbirth. It says clearly that it's your own child by blood. The fruit of your love. And you think you can get away with it? And what's with a long vacation after the project is over? Well, I was thinking of taking a vacation. You're not on vacation or anything. You're unemployed because you were laid off. So I was thinking of taking some time off until I start looking for a new job. You've been unemployed for three months already, and even now it's like a vacation. You say you're going to work in a better place and for a better salary than before, but you haven't been able to get another job at all. And you're acting all cool, talking about how your project is in the final stages and how you have meetings. I can't help it. 
I was good at my job and then I was laid off. My boss is not a good judge of character. I've got to make him see me as a better than I was before or I'm not going to be satisfied. You can't get a job anywhere. How can you be carefree and have an affair when you've been unemployed and are trying to make ends meet? No, being laid off has nothing to do with it. I have been so busy at work. I'd have been so stressed out. I just needed a break. Wasn't that two years ago? Isn't that right around the time you started having an affair? Your performance was getting worse? You were leaving early. How is it you were busy? You had time to have an affair because you were slacking off. If you had time to do that, you could have made one more sales call. It wasn't that I had free time, I was just trying to come up with a plan. You don't know anything about sales, so don't act like you do. Oh yeah? Well, okay, it doesn't matter now if you were competent or you're not at the company you were laid off from. So, your partner seems to be about to have a baby. How are you going to provide for her if you're unemployed? No, I have savings now, and besides, I'm about to get a new job. Huh? The savings we have now is our property. It's not your fling money. No, it's not like that. It is like that. I will not allow you to support your mistress's child with our money. Besides, you said something about getting married soon. Were you planning to divorce me and remarry her? I'm really stunned. I can't believe that you would hide the fact that you were married and go out with her. Yes, I was seeing another woman. It's your fault that it turned out that way. What? Why is it my fault? Because my life with you got stuck in a rut. It wasn't stimulating. It's because you're becoming more and more of a family member. You don't dress up at all anymore. We don't eat out. We bring our own lunch when we go out somewhere. You're nothing like you were before we got married. I was cheated. I'm the victim. I married a woman, not this homely old hag. What are you talking about? You don't make a lot of money, so I have to work too. And that income goes almost entirely to living expenses. How am I supposed to dress up? That's what housewives are for, to make ends meet. So I made ends meet by making lunch, even when we went out to save money. I wanted to have fun with you, at least when we went out. You say you don't like the idea of becoming a family, but you got married, so it's no mistake, we are a family. It's ridiculous a man of your age running around like teenager. Men are always going to remember their childlike heart. It's your fault for not keeping your beauty as a woman. Oh yeah, okay, that's enough. I'm divorcing you. Divorce? Of course. No, wait a minute. Sorry, it was just an impulse. You got her pregnant on a whim? That's even worse. No, that's not it. What can I say? What can I say? You just didn't have any sense of reason. Besides, you have a marriage certificate to register with your partner, don't you? Why don't you divorce an old woman like me and remarry your classmate Kim? promised her that you would be there for her from now on. Didn't you promise her? No, that was a joke. That's even worse. That's like marriage fraud. Anyway, I don't want a divorce. I don't have a job. How am I supposed to make a living? I can't do without you. Staying married to help you live your adulterous life is out of the question, and I don't want a marriage with a cheating criminal as my husband. I won't live in an adultery life. We're going to be a proper couple again. I want to live a normal life as a normal couple. Normal life? You depend on me for that? A life where you don't earn a living, get an allowance, and leave all the chores and work to me? From now on, I'll do the housework too. You should find a job instead of housework. Well, I don't care anymore. Wait, let's just calm down and talk it over. Yes, of course I'm going to ask for alimony, you know. Alimony? You had an affair, so of course. That's no good. Alimony. I'm unemployed. There's no way I can pay you. You've been unemployed for three months. It's about time you got unemployment insurance. You can pay with that. But I'm going to have to raise a child. It's your responsibility, so why don't you get a new job and work hard? I mean, there's no way in hell we're going to go back to being a normal couple when you impregnated a woman you cheated on your wife with. Stop dreaming with your childish mind and get real. Kim was sick when she got pregnant, so she quit her job, but she thinks it's fine because I'm working. When in fact you're unemployed. I feel for your partner. So help me out. I can't live if I pay you alimony. 
At least make it a small amount. I can't afford thousands of or anything. What do I care? You deserved it. Why don't you at least take some responsibility? Well then, you'll be hearing from my lawyer. I'm telling you, I'm not going to give up even one penny of alimony. Oh, come on. The project is in the final stages, and you were just about to finish it. Well, that's great. You're all settled. The grand project of married life. So, Jake and I got divorced. Of course, I made him pay alimony and cut off our relationship once and for all. A few months later, I was living a new life with a clean slate. Hey, Mana. How are you? Who are you? It's me. You remember me, right? So it's true that there's a it's me scam going around now. Scam? No, it's not. It's Jake. Oh, it wasn't a it's me scam. It was a marriage scammer. Oh, come on. Don't call your ex-husband a scammer. I need to talk to you. I don't have anything to say to you. I got my alimony. I'm done with you. You know what? Let's start over. Huh? What are you talking about? I broke up with Kim, so let's start over again. Why? I'm busy. I don't have time for your crap. Because I'm already living a happy enough life on my own. Don't bother me. I know. You became an advisor using the same money-saving techniques you used when we were married. Yes, I did. So don't bother me anymore. With me around, I'll be the catalyst for new ideas on how to save money again. Besides, I'll be a stay-at-home husband instead of busy you, so I'm sure it'll work out. It seems to be the norm nowadays to be a stay-at-home husband. I'll help you work hard. No, no, no. You just haven't found a job yet, have you? You didn't break up with Kim either. You left her, didn't you? I didn't leave Kim. There's no point in being so coy. I already know everything. What are you talking about? I got a call from your parents and Kim. What? You're an idiot, aren't you? I can't believe you thought you could get away with it just because you blocked them. I guess it was so easy to find out where my parents live since we went to school together. Wait a minute. Why are you and Kim in touch? You didn't know each other or anything. We met thanks to you. I got an apology from her for dating you without knowing you were married. Other than that, we talked about a few things. What do you mean, talked? She says she wants to sue you for marriage fraud. That's... that's not true, is it? I'm sorry, but it's true. So, she wants me to testify to the fact that you were married and stuff. What? You're not cooperating, are you? Of course. Thank you. I knew you wouldn't do that. I knew you were on my side. We can do it all over again, can't we? Huh? Of course I cooperated with her. I provided the misdirected message about you preparing the marriage certificate as evidence. It seems the damage report has already been filed. I think the police are on their way. Oh no, I'm in trouble. Help me. Explain to them that the message was a misunderstanding. If you're my wife, you gotta help me. Your ex-wife. And we're strangers now. I don't want to be a criminal defending a scammer. Why would you do such a terrible thing? Just as you didn't think of me as your soulmate, it seems you weren't mine either. So whatever happens to you doesn't matter to me. Even if you don't get a new job, you'll be guaranteed food, clothing, and shelter if you stay in the cage. Isn't that great? Wait, forgive me. Not the police. I wasn't trying to scam anyone. It seems my ex-husband was caught by the police as a marriage scammer, but I heard that it was settled out of court. However, the fact that he abandoned a pregnant woman who was about to give birth was considered malicious, and he was charged a substantial amount of compensation. In fact, he had asked his parents to pay my alimony on his behalf. And this time he cried, asking them to do the same for Kim's compensation. Now, in order to repay the money, he has been forced to find a new low-paying job. He is working tirelessly from morning to night to repay the debt. Hey, can I ask you something? Did you change the house key without permission? Huh? Whose house? Obviously, I'm talking about my house. I can open the door using my key. You changed the lock, didn't you? Can you stop pretending that you didn't and open the door? My house? Do you own a house? I don't have time for your jokes. I have work tomorrow. I don't want you to be here. Can you just open the door? I don't know what you're talking about. 
If you can't get in, why don't you ask locksmith? But you are in the house, right? I can see the lights on. Did you just barge in? What? Of course not. It's my house. What? You know, I inherited this house from my dad. You were there too. He wrote in his will that I, the second daughter, would inherit it. I didn't approve that. This house is too good for you. I'm the older sister. I am the one who should get it. Why would you get it instead of me? It doesn't matter if you did or didn't approve. Our dad chose me. You have no right to say anything about inheritance. I do have the right to say, because I am part of the family. Why are you the only one who could get a house? Because I am an independent woman, but you spend all your time playing around with your parents' money. Independent woman, huh? <laughs> You're always at home. How can you say you are independent? There's a job that you can do at home. No, there's no job like that. Yes, there is. I mean, there are a lot of people working from home these days. It's called a remote job. You don't know anything about the real world. What? What do you mean by that? I am older than you. That means I am smarter than you. I don't know about the stupid remote work, but I know I am right. It's remote. You can even spell that word. Are you drunk? Anyway, can you just open the door now? What's with the attitude? Do you know where the capital of Australia is? No, that's not the kind of knowledge you need to show off your smarts. Are you eight years old or something? Just answer the question. Melbourne. Correct. You knew that it wasn't Sydney, huh? Oh, really? The real answer is Canberra. Do smart people usually fall for this kind of thing? No, it's Melbourne. It's Canberra. I mean, okay, this is such a waste of time. Just open the door. I really don't care about the capital of Australia right now. Don't tell me you don't give a shit about the capital of Australia. I'm telling you, it's definitely Melbourne. Okay, whatever. It's Melbourne then. From today onwards, the capital of Australia is Melbourne. You got the right answer. Congrats. Are you happy now? It's always been Melbourne. Whatever. Can you open the door now? No way. I don't want to. Who would open a door for you? This isn't your house anymore. I don't let anyone in who pisses me off. Well, what about my stuff and furniture? It's mine now. I will use them all. How could you? I have some important documents there. I'll need them tomorrow. Can you open the door now? Important documents? Like the manual for the hair dryer? No, they're work related. You are unemployed. How could you lie to me like that? <laughs> well, I'll send your stuff to you when you find a new house. I'm sure you have a hard time finding a place to live, being unemployed. Until then, I'll let you use this house as a storage space for your stuff. I won't charge you anything because I'm a kind person, and you should be grateful for your sister's kindness. Let's talk about it, okay? Can you open the door first? I can't. My husband will be home soon. Can you not interrupt our time together? What? Your husband's going to live here too? Of course. It's natural for husband and wife to live together. Besides, I'm supposed to rent a room upstairs to my best friend Marina. What? Why are you deciding everything on your own? Not only leaving there without my permission, but renting the room to someone else? Because it's my house. It's none of your business, okay? I've already received the initial rent, so I'm sorry, but there's no place for you in this house. If you want to pay the rent fee, maybe I'll consider it. But the room is full for now, so I'm sorry. <laughs>
I'm speechless. Why are you being such a jerk? I've always hated you. That's all. I mean, I have every right to be a jerk to you. I really can't believe it. We are family. So what? We just have the same parents. <laughs> You're the one who abandoned me and moved into this luxury house on your own. And you want to talk about family now? I didn't abandon you. Dad chose me to be the caretaker of the house. You received your inheritance too, didn't you? That's not the same thing. What? How could you manage a house then? You can even clean your own room. I can do that. Ah, you're so annoying. I'm gonna throw your stuff out the window instead. Good luck catching it. Wait a minute. Please don't do that. I have a lot of important things. Well, can you please get the hell out of here? And don't come near this house again. Oh, you have no place to go, right? <laughs> Why don't you stay at a motel or something? Maybe you can do your stupid remote job there too. Hey, you're not serious, right? You wouldn't do such a terrible thing, would you? Am I serious or not? I'll show you. Here you go. Isabella? It's my mug! I can't believe you actually threw it. That's because you didn't leave. Do you understand now? Okay, I understand now. I'll get you a contract. I'll leave it on your doorstep tomorrow. I will also put an envelope. Put it in the mailbox after you sign. Finally, you understand. Yes, I understand. All I have to do is sign, right? I could just get this house by doing this? <laughs> I'm so lucky. Get the hell out of here now. <laughs> did you sign and send it? I did. Shut up. It's none of your business anymore. This is now officially your house. Are you sure you want to do this? You're so annoying. I don't care what you say. I'm going to live in Dad's luxury house from today. You ugly, unemployed bitch should get the hell out of here. Then, as per the contract, please take care of $8,000 every month. What? What? You're going to live in the house, right? Then, please pay me the monthly payment. What do you mean by payment? No, what do you mean? I still have a mortgage. Mortgage? What's mortgage? I know about sausage. <laughs> How did you live your whole life without knowing the word mortgage? Your father bought the house in installments and we're still paying off the installments. Do you understand? What do you mean? So you have to keep paying $8,000 a month. What? $8,000? It's not free? Who said you could stay there for free? No, because it's dad's house. That's right. That's why he left the house to me. I can pay $8,000 a month. What? How could you pay that much when you are unemployed? If I had $8,000, I could go to Australia for a month. I didn't know you loved Australia that much. I know that 8,000 is a lot of money. I'm not as insane as you are, and I know the value of things. So you're just bluffing, right? There's no way I can pay you. I'm not bluffing. I was actually paying that much. There's a proof of document in the house. Why don't you take a look? What's that? I mean, you're unemployed, right? Where did the money came from? I run a business. I told you, I work from home. Do you run a company? You mean you're the CEO? That's right. I thought you could only be a CEO if you were an old man. What? Are you serious? Oh, that's good. Um, what? I have a bad feeling about this. I'll just ask you to pay for it. What? Because you're the CEO, right? That means you have a lot of money, right? 
Not really. I'm just starting out. No, no, no. You can pay $8,000 a month, right? You are rich, so pay me instead. You can do that, can't you? I'm going to pay $8,000 a month for a house I don't live in? And you get to live in a luxury house for free? Do you think there is such a convenient story in this world? Yeah, I'm talking about it. If you're rich, then it's not gonna be a problem. I can't believe I'm hearing this from a grown-up woman. I will never do that crazy favor. What? You have money, but you're so stingy. You're the boss, but you're petty. It's not about being petty or stingy. Anyway, I'm not paying you, so please pay me. Fine, I will leave this house then, as you wish. I can't afford to pay that much. You can leave if you want, but you will pay me, okay? Because it's your house. What? Wait a minute! Why do I have to pay for it if I don't live there? That's what I said earlier. Ugh. It's your house, after all. Why are you so quick to throw away your responsibility like that? It's a precious house we inherited from our dad. You should take care of it. Who took this house away? I told you many times that we should talk, didn't I? You're the one who changed the locks, broke in, and stole the house. So take responsibility. Um... Why don't you go get a real job? Even if I got a normal job, I wouldn't be able to pay $8,000 a month. That's right. You complain about me, but you are just woman playing around with your husband's money. You're the one who can work and is unemployed. That's not true. I work sometimes too. I heard you even skip your part-time job twice a week. It's a good chance for you to seriously change your mind. I cannot do that. I can work seriously. I can understand why our dad didn't give you the house. You don't know the word mortgage. You don't work, you can pay, and you're the worst kind of human being. How could you lecture me when you are being like this? You are my younger sister. An older sister is better than a younger sister. The older one is unconditionally better than the younger sister, regardless of her job. That's why I have the right to lecture my sister. If you're better than me, then work and pay me. Ugh, I don't care. I'm leaving this house. I will never pay you. Well, what about your friends who are going to live in the house? You already got the initial payment, right? Oh, that's right. I don't know. If you don't want to live in the house, you will have to pay them back. I already... Don't tell me you already spent it, are you? Because I don't have a choice. I needed the money to move in here. What? You spent it on yourself? That's like a scam. Stop it. It doesn't sound good when you use that word. In this case, I'm the landlord. And I deserve to get the initial payment. I have a right to use this money. Seriously? How selfish can you be? I'm warning you. If you don't return the payment, you're going to have a real problem. Even if they are your friends, many people will go crazy when it comes to money. You better be prepared. It will be my own problem, not yours. Can you please stop giving me lectures like you know what you're doing? Okay, you don't seem like you want to talk. I've given you my advice, in case you need it. Anyway, I'll talk to my husband when he gets home. Maybe I could use his salary. Oh, your husband? I don't think he will be home today. Huh? What do you mean? How do you know that? I just called your husband and met with him. I told him everything. Why did you do that without my permission? What did you tell him? Everything? Yeah, everything. I thought I should say it since he will live in this house too. It's only natural to contact him. When I showed him the broken mug, he was furious. He even apologized, saying he didn't know this had happened. Why is he apologizing to you? I don't get it. 
What is my husband doing now? He said he would go back to his parents' house to cool down. Then he's going to start divorce proceedings. What? Divorce? Yes, divorce. Divorce, divorce? Divorce, divorce. Divorce? The word everybody knows about it? Yeah, that divorce. What the hell are you talking about? Who doesn't know the word divorce? No way! Hold on! Why are we suddenly talking about that? Did I do something to my husband? Because you lied to your husband, didn't you? Um... I heard you've been bragging to him that you inherited this house. I don't think he even knew I lived there originally. He apologized to me so many times. He's a man of integrity. Poor guy. His only fault is that he picked the wrong woman to marry. I did it because if we live in the house with my husband, we would be happy. I just genuinely wish that. You and your husband? I thought you were going to let your friend live there, weren't you? That's true, but... You can leave my friend in need, can you? And you took money from your friend in need? Your story is full of contradictions. I can't even listen to you. Every time you say a word, you contradict yourself and I'm tired of listening. There are just so many reasons. I heard that you didn't even tell your husband that you were letting your friend live with you. What are the circumstances that you can even explain to your husband? I was going to tell him about it later, but I was so busy with the relocation. To hide the fact that you took money, right? There's no point in making excuses for me in the first place. Your husband is going to charge your alimony and the cost of finding a new house. He seems pretty angry, you know? Oh no, oh no! How much is alimony? Only money is not a fixed amount. It's case by case. Don't you know that? Case by case? Based on what? Do you think it will be cheap? It's not that big of a deal. Like $20? It's a pretty big deal. I've never heard of only money that cheap. I'm sure it's at least more than 1000 Oh no! $8,000 a month plus alimony and moving expenses? I can't afford that. Good luck with that. You are really annoying. If anyone should pay alimony, it's you who insulted me. I'm your sister. This is so serious. Like, violation of insulting me, you know? You seem to think you've won, but I'm sure my husband will forget me. Well, your husband is a kind man. Why don't you call him and see what's gonna happen? I've been trying to call him, but I can't reach him. Maybe he blocked your number. It's pretty bad to make such a kind husband angry. I'm sure the amount of alimony will be reasonable. Oh no, what should I do now? So, you better get a serious job. Even if I work, I can pay the bills. Then why don't you borrow money or something? You made your own decision. I don't know if you're whining or not. I'll talk to my friends about it anyway. Friend? You mean the friend you were going to rent the room to? Marina? Yes, that's right. Marina is my best friend. Oh, about that. She's going to sue you. Your husband contacted her just now. And he told me about it. What? Sue me? Because you lied that it was your house and scammed her. It would have been better if you returned the money, but you used it, didn't you? You are so fucked up. Why don't you try to make enough money to pay her back? Get a day job or something? Well, Marina seemed to be very angry with you. So I guess it's too late for that. I can't work. I didn't mean to scam her. Then what were you planning to do? It's true that you lied to her and took money. It's a scam. Wait, 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 wait. What will happen to me if I get sued? They will scold me or something? <laughs> scold? Oh, you wish. Of course, 
Marina will probably charge you fees and moving expenses. If Sori solves everything, then there's no need for the police or the courts. I think even kids can understand this kind of situation. So, Marina won't live with me anymore? Of course not. Who wants to live with a scammer like you? I didn't mean to scam her. Then why don't you return the payment you received? If you're not a scammer, you can pay it back, right? Um, look, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. Um, why don't you continue to live in this house and pay the $8,000 every month? What are you talking about now? You made your own decision. So why don't you do something about it? Why are you so cold? We're family. Blood is thicker than water, right? <laughs> we only have the same parents, right? Well then, good luck with that. After that, my sister was forced to repay the mortgage and fell into debt hell. The husband divorced her and her best friend cut her off. I haven't seen my sister since then, but she's now working at a factory. I wonder how many years it will take for her to pay off all her debts. Hi dad, it's Mary. Are you still at work? I need to talk to you. Do you have a minute? Oh, Mary? Haven't heard you in a while. What's up? It's important. I think it's going to take some time to explain. I'm already home, so it's okay. Go ahead. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to freak you out. I'm sorry. I'm still not very clear on what I want to say. I just thought I should tell you. What? What's wrong? Mom might be having an affair. What? May is having an affair? She's taking advantage of the fact that you are away on assignment, and she's bringing a man into the house. Um, uh, wait a minute. What do you mean? Oh gosh, Mom. Things have been so much easier for her financially since she got remarried to you. I mean, me too. I'm so grateful to you for helping me finish college at a school that I never thought I'd be able to go to. You've been so kind to me and you're such a wonderful father. I can't believe she would betray you like this. As a daughter, I've never felt so ashamed and disappointed in anyone in my life. Dad, I'm so sorry. Mary, calm down. I want to calm down too. So let's sort out the situation together. Can I ask you a few questions? Oh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. First, do you know who's the boyfriend is? Looks like he's a student working at the place where mom works. A student? Does that mean he's a college student? A guy younger than you? Yes. I don't know his full name. Mom called him Kenneth. Kenneth. It could be either his first or last name. But which is it? My mother often calls people she is familiar with by their first names. Oh, that's right. Then, it's more likely to be a first name. Is it that, um, did you see something incriminating? If you're so sure about the affair, is that what happened? Yes. When I came home earlier than usual, she was just seeing him off at the door. They kissed. It wasn't just once or twice. I've seen it many times. She's being very careless, isn't she? Maybe it's because he always sleeps before I get home. Maybe she's not too worried about being caught, but things are a little different now. What do you mean? Actually, my company's working hours changed last month. Now I can change buses better on my way home without having to wait for the later one. Now I get home about 20 minutes earlier than before, but I forgot to tell mom about it. I see. So that's how you saw it. Yep. It must have been tough for you to see your mother doing that. I know you didn't want it to be reminded of it, but thank you for telling me. No, actually, I'm relieved to be able to talk to you and know that I don't have to worry about it alone. To be honest, she makes me sick. Even if it was a man close to her own age, I wouldn't be able to forgive her. 
But if you think that he's younger than me? Mary, are you okay? Huh? You don't want to stay at home, do you? If you want, you can come move out and rent an apartment. But... Don't worry about money. It's sudden, and I'll help you out with what you need. I know you might be worried about leaving alone for the first time, but you don't want to keep living with May under these circumstances. Well, yes. Can I really take you up on that? Of course. If you ever need help, you can always count on me. You are my daughter. I'll help you financially. And if you're having a hard time emotionally, you can talk to me about anything. Thanks, Dad. Now, I just need to check out May. Um, I... I'll look into it. But... It's okay. I feel calmer now that I've talked to you. It must be hard for you too, so I can leave everything to you. Besides, I know mom's routine better than you do. If I'm going to leave house and live alone, she'll be able to bring Kenneth home as much as she wants, and she'll be happy. I see. If you want to find something, it will be the perfect opportunity. But don't go overboard. Come to me before it gets out of hand. Also, you never know what will happen if May finds out, so be very careful. I got it. May, can I have a word? Oh hey, what's up? Nothing, I was just wondering what you're doing right now. Are you at home? Yeah, I'm home alone watching TV. That's a strange thing to ask. You've only been calling me lately when you had something to discuss. I'm sorry about that. Things have been pretty hectic. I finally got it together, so here I am. Oh, I see. Sounds like you've been busy. Well, work is keeping me pretty busy. I've also got a lot going on in my personal life. Your personal life? When you're on your leaving, you have to do a lot of things by yourself. Yeah, I guess so. You know, you're working alone and I'm home alone. And Mary seems to be doing fine without me. Maybe that's what it's like to live apart from each other. But Mary, she comes back sometimes on weekends, right? That's true. Even though she moved out on her own, she says she lives in a neighborhood close by. She comes here to pick up and drop off things in her room. But she leaves as soon as she's done though. Young people these days are so reserved, aren't they? Young people these days, huh? By the way, do you know why Mary started leaving alone? What? That's because she's a working adult now. I guess she thought it was time to start living on her own. It was sudden, but I think it's a good thing. I agree. At least, if she's not on her own, there's a chance she'll be pushed around by you in the future. Hmm, what's with the... You're saying that in a roundabout way, aren't you? Yes, I am. I intentionally made it sound roundabout. Yeah? You say you are alone at home. You're also with someone a lot, aren't you? You must be enjoying the company of a young person these days, right? Huh? But Mary left home, so I'm basically alone, right? At least, if you came home, we could live together, the two of us. But that won't be possible for a while, right? Not just for a while. I don't think it's going to be possible ever. What? What are you saying? I don't know what you mean. You're acting a little weird today. Calling me weird is like the pot calling the kettle block. Well, I'm beating out of the bush too much. I thought it would be easier if you figure it out on your own, but guess there's no choice. So what? What? I've got a lot of stimulating photos on hand, so I'm just going to leave it at that for now. This room is obviously our bedroom, right? What is this? What is this picture? That's what I want to know. What is this picture? 
Why is there a guy in our bedroom? Oh, um, he's a friend of Mary's. He came to visit Mary, but you know, she started leaving alone and isn't at home. I felt bad asking him to leave, so I just served him some tea. After that, he said he didn't feel well. So I thought I let him rest in the bedroom. That's all, you know? And then, I don't know what it was, but that picture. So how did this picture come about? Well, that's... For a long-winded excuse, you didn't end it well, did you? Oh no, it's not an excuse or anything. This guy is really a friend of Mary's. There's nothing more you can say. That's the end of the conversation. Do you still not realize that I was playing dumb on purpose? What? What are you talking about? I've already done a lot of checking. So what are you talking about? The picture just now. It was taken from a hidden camera in the bedroom. A hidden camera? What the hell is that? Where the hell? From this angle, I say it's in the closet. It doesn't matter now. The camera's been taken down. When did this happen? You've been back here without us knowing? So this is all very elaborate. You're not going to admit to cheating on me. Oh my god. Alright, I admit it. Are you satisfied? That guy is my boyfriend. Kenneth Marks, 20 years old, my sweetheart, not an old man like you. He's a young, he's cute, he's my boyfriend. How's that? I hope that's enough to make you happy. Okay. I'm willing to pay you about $20,000 in alimony. You're willing to pay me alimony? Well, fortunately, Mary is working and I'm sure she has a good amount of money. Mary should be on my side, and I'm sure she'll be willing to pay for me. I'm sure she'll be happy to pay at least $20,000 for me. Unfortunately not. It was Mary who leaked this to me and found out all about you. Huh? Mary's the one who set up the hidden camera too. What's that? Why would she do that? She witnessed your affair. I'm her mother. There's no way she would betray her mother. She's supposed to be on my side no matter what. Unlike you, she's my blood. I'm her true and genuine mother. That's why she can forgive you. Huh? Your ex-husband, the reason for your divorce from Ivan. You told Mary that Ivan was having an affair, right? Because... That's actually what happened, so yeah. No, Mary knew. She knew the truth. Huh? She went to see Ivan recently. What? That can be true, right? I didn't give her Ivan's address. It seems she got it from one of her relatives. There is someone who's been exchanging Christmas cards with him all this time. Who on earth is that? I can't answer that question because I didn't ask. Anyway, when she met with Ivan, he told her that the cause of the divorce was her mother's infidelity. She told him that she hadn't received any child support for a long time. In fact, you kept it, and none of it was ever used for Mary. She now knows about all the evil things you've been hiding from her. Do you think she can forgive such a lying mother, no matter how much you are related to her? I'm sure you'll be hearing from Ivan about this mother soon. Wait a minute! What? Don't make it sound like I'm the only one who's at fault! Stop it! I've heard everything from Mary too. Ivan and you got divorced when Mary was in elementary school. After that, all her clothes were hand-me-down from neighbors and relatives. Even her underwear and socks were rags. When Mary finished her compulsory education and became a high school student, you told her her father wouldn't pay for her school materials. So, 
she would have to earn her own money. You kept telling her to work after high school because you didn't have enough money to send her to college. So Mary spent her days working part-time until the fall of her sophomore year of high school when I became her father. I cried when I realized Mary had a really hard life since she was a little girl because of you. You are a terrible mother. You are the worst human being I've ever known. That's not true, you know? You know what? I did it as part of her education, or rather, for Mary's sake. Education? I thought it would be better for her to learn about how hard money is while she's young. So, the child support money that Ivan has been paying for Mary, you haven't touched any of it. Well, the thing is... You spent it, did you? To satisfy your own needs. You only think about yourself. Stop lying about it being for Mary. No, um... Mary says she doesn't want to see you ever again. What? The address that she moved to was temporary. She's somewhere else now. There's no point in trying to see her. You're kidding, right? So? He's there now, isn't he? The guy you're cheating on me with. Oh my god, what are you talking about? I'm home alone. We've already confirmed that he went into the house. Me and my lawyer. What lawyer? I'm with Kenneth's wife and the lawyer I hired. What? Why did you bring a lawyer? That, of course, is to have a thorough discussion with you. You know that Kenneth has a wife and kids, don't you? He's a student, but I guess he has two children with his wife. Wait a minute! Don't tell me his wife! Oh, she knows everything. She's going to talk to you guys about compensation and alimony. And me too, of course. Wait a minute! I don't have that kind of money! Well, let's talk about it now. I tried to enter the house, but the door was locked. What a wayward move. Of course, I had the key, so I could enter the house without any problem. First of all, Kenneth agreed to divorce easily. He was also being supported by his working wife, and he was trembling as in the presence of a fierce demon. He was like a puppy staring at a wolf. He was still cute enough to admit his guilt easily. And my wife, May. Mary cut ties with her, and if she divorced me, she would have no one to take care of her. Anyway, she ranted and raved. When I threatened her with a trial, she reluctantly agreed. But by the time we were done talking, I was exhausted and saw my lawyer. Ivan also questioned her about using her daughter's child support money without permission. Now that she has returned to her parents' house, she is working from morning till night to pay the huge amount of alimony and other things she was charged for. Hey, I went to your house the other day and there was a poor, very bony girl. Who is that girl? I was so shocked. What were you doing in my house without my permission? I mean, how did you get in the house? Did you break a window or something? Of course, I came in through the front door. You gave me a key and said I could come over any time I wanted. Did I say that? Oh no, you said it yourself and you forgot? I don't remember. Anyways, when did you come back to the US? You should have at least called me. Sorry, I wanted to surprise you. I got a month's vacation from work and came back to the US two days ago. One month vacation, huh? Sounds fun. I know, right? I can't get that much time off in some companies. Anyway, who is that girl? I was going to surprise you, but I was the one who got surprised. I really thought my heart would stop. I don't know. You don't know? She was in your room. A bony little girl with long hair. Could it be a ghost? What? Are you possessed? 
Or was she some kind of spirit? She looked so ragged. Maybe she died in some kind of accident? Maybe your house is haunted, like someone died in there before. Either way, you should move out as soon as possible and have exercised. Um, that girl is from the neighborhood. She's not a ghost, don't worry. But she was in your room. A random kid from the neighborhood wouldn't just come into the house without permission. I lent her the key too. Why? Because, um, we became friends. I felt sorry for her too, you know? You saw her, right? She's so pathetic. I see. So you're taking care of her because you feel sorry for her? That's right. You know that I'm a very kind person, right? I used to help stray dogs and cats too. But you surprised me. She suddenly asked me to give her a loaf of bread. So, how old is she? Four years old, I think. I see. I asked her name and age, but she didn't say anything. All she would say was, I'm hungry. Her parents must not even feed her. She must be having a very bad time at her home. I feel so bad for her. Right? She's a poor girl. That's why. Do you know her name? Her name is Monica. I know she's a stranger, but I really feel so sorry for her. So I gave her a key and told her she could stay at my house anytime she wanted. It's like she's using my house as a shelter. That's so sweet of you, sis. I didn't get to see you today, and I'll see you tomorrow at your place. Um, why? Don't you want to see your favorite sister for the first time in five years? And tomorrow is Saturday. It's your day off, right? Do you already have a plan? Well, I'm not home from work tomorrow. Can you just slow down? Let's do it some other time. Well, I don't have much time here in the US, you know. By the way, what do you do now? Um, I'm doing a lot of things right now. I'm very busy, okay? I see. I wish I could see you soon. But I'm also worried about Monica, so I'll be there tomorrow. You don't have to come. Oh yeah, I'll clean your room for you. I don't think Monica would feel comfortable in there. Sis, there's so much mess in your room. I told you, I'm busy. I don't have time to clean. You haven't been good at cleaning since you were a kid. That's why I'm going to help you. I've been cleaning your room since we were kids. I'm not busy anyway. I'll make you dinner too. What time will you be home? No, thank you. You don't have to do that. Don't be shy. I want to see my sister now that I'm back home. We're the only family we have left since our parents passed away. I'm not being shy. You really don't have to come. I have a good idea. I'll stay at your place when your room is clean. I'm getting tired of living in a hotel. No way. You can't do that. I'm too busy with work to take care of you. So I'll take care of you while I'm here. And I want to be with you. Don't stay over. If possible, don't even come to my house. Please. If you think you're doing this for my sake, you really don't have to do this. I'm Chloe, 30 years old. Our parents died in a car accident when I was in high school. It was very depressing, but fortunately, they left us a lot of money, so we were able to have a decent life without them. It's been my dream since I was a little girl to study abroad. My parents left me enough money to make that dream come true. However, I was hesitant to leave the US without my sister and was about to give up on my dream. But my sister pushed me to pursue my dream. After graduation, I didn't go back to the US because I started working right away. Although I kept in touch with my sister, I was not able to return to the US. Finally, I came back after five years. I had decided to visit my sister first thing when I came back. However, my sister said she was busy and never came to see me. I don't know what's wrong with her. I went to my sister's house, although she told me not to come because I was worried about the girl. Then it led to a terrible thing.
Sis, is an umbrella recyclable garbage? As I remember, there are different rules about garbage disposal in the US, right? What? I cleaned up your room. You can see the clean floor now. It's pretty clean. You're welcome. Sis, it's dangerous to leave things like broken umbrellas and cups broken in half. Someone can get hurt by this. Why are you in my room? Because you're so busy with work that you don't have time to clean. That's why I did it for you. I didn't ask. You need to leave right now. Oh, don't worry. I didn't throw away your nerd collection. I mean, you know, plastic bottles, take out food trash. Just throwing those things out made things a lot better. Let's make sure we take out the trash. Fine, fine. So about the kid. Did you talk to her? Oh, she helped me clean up. She's a good girl. Did she say anything? What? She said nothing. Actually, I wonder if she can speak properly. Even if I talk to her, she just shakes her head and doesn't answer me out loud. Do you usually talk to her? I hardly ever talk to her either. So, I gave her a bath and cut her hair. And she was so cute. I was so surprised. What? You did that? What are you doing? Why do you have to do such a thing? Why? Is it a bad thing? I mean... Well, yeah, maybe it's not nice to cut a child's hair without parents' permission. But it felt like she hadn't bathed in days. You think so too, don't you? Well... If she gets so clean, her parents will notice when she comes home. Maybe it's not a good idea. Do you think her parents will get mad at her? I'll be fine. How do you know if it's okay? Hey, where does she live? No matter how much I ask Monica, she won't tell me. I don't know either. It looks like some house in a neighborhood. You know, you're always supposed to report cases like this. Am I right? I did, but it's useless to report it now. No one will help her anyway. That's why I'm the one taking care of her. It's for her best. I see. Then I should go to Monica's house and talk to her parents. That's enough. What? That's enough. You need to stop being involved with that girl. You won't be in the US forever. If you're too nice to her, she'll get attached to you. You don't have to say it like that. Kids take advantage of you if you're too nice to them. They'll start to take advantage of you. I don't think so. First of all, you can't take care of her all the time, right? Don't be nice to her halfway. Well, I indeed need to leave the country soon. You think you're being nice and helping people, but it's just annoying. You give them hope by being nice to them, and then they throw you away. It's even more pathetic, isn't it? That's true, but... But you can't just leave a hungry child there. If I speak up, maybe something will change. It's okay. Just leave her alone. The more you do something, the worse it's going to get. But you feel sorry for her. That's why you let her stay in the house with the key. I thought you were trying to help Monica. Well, yes, I am. I still think we should call the police. The police would help her find a better place. Don't call the police. If we let her go home, she won't be fed or bathed. It's okay. You don't have to do anything. Why? The police would arrest the parents if they did this. You can't even be allowed to leave their children for long periods like this. If her parents are so unattentive like this, they should get punished by law. It's crazy that her parents allow her to stay in a stranger's house. Shut up. I'm doing my best to help her. I didn't ask for your opinion. Just let me handle this. I can't. You feel bad for her, that's why you let her stay in here, right? Why are you being so hesitant to call the police now? Leave me alone. The police won't do anything anyway. In fact, if I call the police, my neighbor will judge me. 
Why? You've been away from the US for so long that you don't even know what it's like. All the neighbors are so judgy and mean. If you do anything unnecessary, you won't be able to live here. Instead of helping that kid, I'll end up being kicked out. But... Chloe, get the hell out of my room. I am so sick of you. But... Sis, I think you've changed. You used to be more kind-hearted. You were my favorite big sister, even though you couldn't clean and you were lazy. I haven't changed. You are just being cocky after working abroad. I didn't do anything wrong. Where did you send Monica? Sis, you finally messaged me. Monica's not at home. You took her out, didn't you? No, I didn't. You're the only one who could have taken her out. I don't know where you're hiding her. Just give her back to me. I'll report it to the police. Fine, do it. What? Reporting to the police or more like turning yourself in. I think the police are looking for you instead of Monica. What do you mean? Even after you told me not to come to the house, I kept going back. Then Monica was in that room every day. I told you, I gave her the key. It's just weird, you know. I cleaned your room and found some children's clothes in there. Monica's your kid, right? You've been lying to me all the time. You're the one abandoning Monica, aren't you? That's... I found pictures of you holding the baby in the hospital. Looking so happy. Sis, tell me what happened. You are right. Monica is the child I gave birth to. Why did you say it wasn't your kid? And you didn't take care of her at all. I feel sorry for her. You should feel sorry for me. It's great that she was born, but it's so hard to take care of her. I can't tell you how much trouble I went through because I gave birth to Monica. Of course, it's hard to raise a kid. Why did you have a baby if you weren't ready for it? He told me he would raise the baby with me. But right after the baby was born, he left me for another woman. What? Oh no. He took all our money and ran away. We were struggling to make ends meet. I see. I didn't know. You should have told me. Even if I told you, you were in overseas. You can't help me at all. I had to deal with it on my own. But we're sisters. You should have called me. What difference does it make? Um, don't talk to me like this when you've never come back to see me for five years. Sorry, I didn't know you were in such trouble. If I had known, I would have done whatever it took to come back home and help my sister. That's why I didn't tell you. You went abroad to make your dream come true. I didn't want you to worry. I know what you would do. You'd give up on your dream and come back to the US. Sister. You were thinking about me like that? I know my real sister is a kind person. That's why I've been trying so hard to deal with it on my own. I'm sure things would have been different if Monica's father hadn't left you. I'm sure you would have been a good mother. If he hadn't left, none of this would have happened. But that doesn't mean you don't have to take care of Monica. The only person Monica can rely on is her mother. If you've decided to raise her on your own, you have to at least take responsibility for her. You don't need to tell me what to do. You don't even know how hard it is to raise a child. She's so loud. She cries all the time and says she's hungry all the time. It's so much trouble. Then why didn't you ask for help from somewhere else? If you contact the government, you can even leave her temporarily in an orphanage. What can the government do for me? All they do is lecture me and take Monica away from me. Children are better off with their mothers. If she's happy with her mother, she's better off with her mother. But do you think Monica is happy being with you now? You two live in the same house. 
But you're not home all the time. Shut up. She's mine, so it's none of your business. You can't do whatever you want just because you are her mother. No, I can do whatever I want. She's mine. It's up to me what happens to that girl. Sis, come on. Wake up. Don't you dare lecture me like that. Leave me alone. I can't leave you alone. We're family. It's what families do, helping each other in hard times. Please, sister, think about what you're doing. Shut up. You know, I've been struggling to make ends meet with my kid. I know it's been hard. But sis, if you left her home that long, you must have been working so long every day. Didn't you manage to get some money? I could only earn a little money. It's still not enough. No, I know you're lying. You were playing around with your boyfriend. Then you found Monica annoying more. You say you're busy with work, but you're not home more than half the time, right? What? I kept going over to your house to check on her, and I met someone from the neighborhood. They told me about you over the past few years. Those guys talk a lot of unnecessary shit. They told me everything. After you met that guy, they never saw you being with Monica. They were so worried about Monica. The neighbors always lecture me every time we go out. It was a pain in the ass. That's not lecturing. They were just worried. They were worried about you and Monica. That's why they were talking to you. How can they be worried about us? Listen to me, sis. There are people around you who are trying to reach out to you. I am one of them. Sis, you should take a better look around you. Being stubborn all by yourself won't get you anywhere. Shut up. Don't talk back to me. Give me back Monica. Monica is in foster care right now. She's been there for three days. What? I mean, for three days now? What are you doing without telling me? I've been trying to reach you, but you haven't returned my calls. I've been waiting for you in your room, and you haven't come home. You were with a guy the whole time, weren't you? Yes, I was. I was on vacation with him. My good mood was ruined because of you. So I called the police, and they took her into custody. And the police are looking for you. Wait, does that mean I'm under arrest? Yes. A parent must raise a child. So you want me to go to jail? No, it's not like that. That's terrible. Don't do this to me. You told me I'm the only family. You did this to me. It's too much. I'm sorry. I wish I had realized how hard it was for you earlier. I regret it so much. But I don't want to regret it anymore. That's why I called the police. That's just an excuse. Please, you should realize what you have done. And start over again. That's ridiculous. I don't want to get arrested. Please, you can be the sweet sister you used to be again. No way. I just finally found my soulmate and started a new life with him. You and Monica have ruined my life. I still believe in you, sis. I'll be waiting for you to change. My sister was caught and charged with child abandonment and other crimes and is now behind bars. She won't be able to come out for a few years. In the meantime, she is receiving counseling to prevent the same thing from happening again. After my vacation, I returned to my country with Monica. Monica was a little confused at first in a new place where she didn't speak the language. But now she has made some friends and is smiling more and more. I'm anxious about living with a child that I have never experienced before, but I will wait for my sister with Monica. Until then, I will be responsible for taking care of her. I believe that by the time she gets released, she will be the sweet and kind sister that she used to be. Thank you for watching. 
please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video!